So you're never going to engage in a business conversation if all you're doing is obsessing over the Slack logo or the Zara logo. It's a complete effing waste of time, you guys. Okay, does anybody have questions about what we just did there? I think 100% of winning this was the fact that you knew that having a list of tens rather than thousands is is not going to work. So if if I did the same with Stanley, I wouldn't be able to do that because I don't have your knowledge or experience in, mm-hmm. in that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So was it really just the answers, the questions? Or no, I told you, you still need to know what you're doing. I mean, I can't just put a monkey in here and, and, and the robot reads the questions and bingo, five thousand bucks in your pocket. I, I, I said right at the beginning, if you remember, I said the problem is I don't think Stanley knows all that he's doing and his friend, client also doesn't know what he's doing. It's a combination. They don't know what they want. You don't know how to ask the questions to help them. One of you two needs to know what they're doing. And I just know enough. And you say like, well, I don't know that these percentages are right or wrong. If he spent any amount of time, this is okay. So I'm going to go on a rant right now. The, the reason why I'm so adamant that designers stop talking about graphic design, like whether or not Zara's logo has too much or too little kerning in it is because we're too busy trained like monkeys to fight for the scraps and talk about the things they want us to talk about. So you're never going to engage in a business conversation if all you're doing is obsessing over the Slack logo or the Zara logo. It's a complete effing waste of time, you guys. Let's get over this. It's like saying blondes are better than brunettes or redheads are better than blondes. It's like, it doesn't matter. You have to dig a little deeper. So people will often ask me, what's a great design book you've read? I I was like, I don't know. I've never read a great design book. However, I've read, start with why I've read these books and these books have helped me grow and to engage in much deeper level conversations. So in the world of digital marketing, you do need to learn a little bit. And I bet you, if you spent one weekend, just one weekend, Take this Saturday and Sunday to go through the internet and start typing in things about business, about marketing, social media, conversion rates, sales funnel, click funnels. You will then be much smarter and be ready to talk to your clients about what it is that they really need help with. And everybody knows this now. Everything is marketing. If people don't know who you are, they don't know your story and they don't attach to it, you're going to have a heck of a time trying to get any real work or to sell your service or to launch your product. The game has, has and always will be about marketing. you got to get known. Now, marketing has a dirty tinge to it because we think of marketing as advertising. Somebody yelling at you repeatedly over and over again on messages that you don't believe, trying to convince you of something. Well, these are, this is the, the new era of marketing. It isn't about that at all. Use that guideline. Inform or inspire. Teach people something. Give them some value because you're exchanging their time and attention you better give them something valuable. This is the game we're all playing right now, or we should all be playing. And when you play it, when your client, your prospective client has a problem doing that very thing, you're like, well, let's talk because I figured out how to do these things and here's where you're doing it wrong. You do need to have some level of expertise. Now, let's just say you're really truly just like, I have no freaking clue. All I can do is ask really great questions. You could then ask, do you think 14 signups and having two people engage with you is a low or high number. And then Stanley would say, that's a really low number. And you say, well, how do you know that? Well, I don't know that. Well, let's look this up. Conversion rate, email click funnel, and you're going to find out it's going to be about three or 4%, maybe even lower. It's really freaking low. It's abysmal. So you just keep asking more questions and you're going to keep saying, how do you know this? Is, is this true? How do you know this? Can we verify this? I see. So it, pro- it prompts me to, to look this up if, if, we, if we, yes. we get to that point. Yes. If you, if you are a true facilitator, a true facilitator has only broad knowledge of things, just broad. Like we're talking about surface level, but what they are, they remain unbiased, okay? I want you to look up this search string different forms of cognitive bias. So I was curious one weekend and I started to look this up because I want to create a talk based on this, okay? So all I did was literally like search for this and I started to find out, like the first thing you see on on bias is the Wikipedia page, which has 
not a hundred, but it felt like a hundred entries into it. So I'm like, that's too much. Let me keep searching. So I was just going from one article to the next. So this one, and I just copy and paste in here. So I'm learning about all these kinds of things. So now I realize something. This is really powerful stuff. We all have bias, right? And it leads us to making consequential mistakes because we assume certain things are true. And it's especially important because this is from the researcher's point of view, how to avoid it during research. You must treat all data findings equally, meaning like you don't believe anything to be true or untrue. And this is something I don't love to do in, in real life, but for understanding research, you got to play it from the devil's advocate, which is to look at from both sides. So when, when Stanley said, that's low, I say, are you sure? What if I said to you, that's high? Next is to be skeptical, especially if everyone agrees with you. And then it goes into the different forms of bias. You see, this is what I do. This is what I do on my spare time. I don't sit there and think about the Zara logo. It's the shiny object syndrome that we all just willingly run towards. Because like, nah, I can't. You know, it's like, that's why it's like, I don't care. Spend your time here. You guys understand? Yeah, this is where your mind expands. And every time you learn a business marketing concept or a social, social psychological thing, it's going to help you to grow. So I happen to listen to Radio Lab, TED Radio Hour, and I play the same things over and over again because I'm obviously not concentrating on it. But each time I learn something a little bit new or a different way to phrase something. And that's what you guys want to do. I hope you enjoyed this segment from the Archives of the Future Pro Group. In case you didn't know, the Pro Group is a community of diverse creatives, including designers, artists, developers, brand strategists, and architects from all over the world. Some of the benefits of being a member include bi-monthly coaching calls with Chris, office hours, which are monthly calls with subject matter experts to help you with things like writing, business development, mindset, and strategy real and virtual meetups, breakout rooms, speed dating, and open tables, exclusive access to over 170 pro calls, mentorship, friendship, accountability, and a sense of belonging. Check the description below to find out more. But don't take my word for it. Here's a pro member to share their experience. Being a part of the group also helped me to transition out of my first production company into something that is way more fulfilling for me. And since we started this business, our very first job, um, we got at $25,000, which is actually five times more than what we usually would charge for work. Um, but it's being a part of this group and constantly being um, accountable to the growth and to the worth that I know is in myself. Like That's what's helped me to definitely improve and to go forward um, in my business. So if you're interested, check out thefuture.com slash pro dash group. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.